It is that time of the month. No, not that time. Fall 2024 anime in a nutshell from Giguk. Let's get it. Now that we're getting closer to the end of the year, in my opinion so far, 2024 hasn't quite reached the caliber of previous years yet. Not that it's been a bad year for anime, but... 2024 was... Um, 2023... The caliber. Maybe there's like specific animes that really stands out that highlights different years. 2024 for me... Like people were talking about solo leveling, right? In January. 100 Girlfriends was I think were you know, airing that time too. Is there anything that like really transcended though? That like was like, wow, like this is like an amazing, amazing anime. Dan Dan I feel like definitely has potential if we're talking about like brand new animes and not talking about like sequels. I think ReZero Season 3 is doing phenomenally well right now. But like some of the earlier stuff that happened, I guess, back in like spring and summer. Summer's probably the weakest. I there were some definitely notable animes. I think Maki and Heroin was amazing. Like Wistoria, there were some great projects, but... And Frieden ended, you know, Frieden was more dominant in 2023, so like 2024 maybe isn't as good as 2023. By any means, but the last few years it felt like full-on juggernaut years of anime, but fall 2024 could be about to change all that. Okay. We've got massive new shows, massive returning shows, hidden gems, more shows anyone could reasonably heap up with, and even following a summer anime season full of love and romance, we still have our dose of wholesome romances like Blue Box and, uh, what's this? I don't know. Uh, blue box is good. It's just unfortunate we can't cover blue box because the copyright holders are very anal about it. This anime, kind of a disappointment. It looked really good. I think that um, Kimiwa Made Sama, You Are Miss Made, is a great example of even if the production value is good, production value being everything that composes the animation, the direction, this, you know, the soundtrack, the voice acting, right, the art style. The overall source material content was kind of like bare bones. And I thought like people would enjoy this regardless, but many people have just kind of tuned off. And uh, what's this? Wait, this is the complete opposite of wholesome. Who the hell would get invested in love story like- A lot of people. The fuck is happening? I think the target audience is for women. Never mind, it's for couples. So both girl and guy in a couple relationship, they're both fucking insane? Oh no, she's hot. The punch is made in. What's going on? Don't you hate it when that happens? Ah, you motherfucker! I'm like, why am I buffering right now? Ain't no way. We got a VPN, you know, I think, uh, sponsorship incoming. Doing what I do, maintaining a solid internet connection for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use your, use your... What, 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 are, we, what are we doing? What is Saley? Discount code. Here, here's the link. Here, here, here's the Saley link, guys. Get Giggle some dollar roonies. Here's the link. 15% discount. And with that said, let's get back to this season's anime. Today's objectives. Oh, okay. Heterosexuality. Obstacle. どこにしようか。ゲイ。そう固くならないで。時は君とこれを楽しめるなんて嬉しいな。はい、笑って。What's going on here? Ladies and gentlemen, they finally made it. What? Canonically straight yaoi. Straight yaoi. How I attended an all guys mixer. Nothing is more heterosexual and straight than kissing your homies in and tucking them goodnight. I'm not sure how I feel about this one. Is this for the usual fan base? Is this to hit up a whole new demographic? Or as my wife calls it, is this just yaoi for cowards? All I'm saying is, boys, have you ever looked at your bro and thought, damn, I'm straight but bro's looking good today. Now if what if you- What is the premise of this show? A bunch of straight dudes that are in the closet that are confused about why they're horny for another dude? And then them just trying to figure out their feelings? Is that this- is that this anime? Your bro still looks like a bro, acted like a bro, talks like a bro, but was actually a girl dressed up as a bro. You ever thought how that make you feel? Yeah, me neither. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, sometimes it takes a real woman to be best boy. All the way around! That was for Nagisa in Assassination Classroom. Summer only gave us a handful of high-profile sequels, but there's certainly not a lack of them this time. Bleach is once again continuing one of the biggest comebacks we've seen. 
please let me watch Bleach on this channel. You monkeys won't watch Battle Shonen because for whatever reason, Battle Shonen is just something you will never consume. Everyone else is out there getting over 10k views on their Bleach reactions and I'm here still fucking farming isekais. Why won't you let me watch Bleach? There's gonna be one more core after this one to I think finalize the thousand year Blood War arc. So by then I hope to marathon all of Bleach and you motherfuckers will let me watch. In an anime for the gamers we have Shangri-La Frontier and Shangri-La Frontier will never be watched because of Kodanshi and their copyright strikes. If you don't know about it, it is what it is. Gun Gale on line two. There are one, two, three, four Isekai returning, which of course includes the return of ReZero after a four Woo! year long wait. It has been a hot minute since I last saw this. I gotta check the patch notes quickly. Booby okay. jokes. Teddy joke incoming. Okay. What yep. the fuck? I'm not gonna lie, I tried watching the first episode of this one, then I realized it's been way too long, so I'll probably need a refresher on season two first. Needless to say, this is the only time I can see Weeb switching to the dub en masse to prevent subtitles covering up Amelia's character development. Blue Lock. Now, after becoming the top selling manga of 2023, yep. outselling the likes of Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen, even goddamn One Piece, I can say the newest anime really is continuing that legacy. Give Blue Lock is definitely hitting the headlines. It's definitely making a lot of noise, but not in the way that you would want it to. People are clowning, people are farming about the downfall of Blue Lock, and it's not even an exaggeration. If you know what's going on, you should know that, you know, the production committee, Bandai Namco, and 8 -Bit Studios, the decision makers are fucking up by taking up too many projects and just min-maxing what's happening, right? It's not the animator's fault at 8 -Bit Studios, but I don't think 8 -Bit Studios is free of any guilt. Many people say, don't blame the studios! No, 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 no. The studio is not just the animators. There's many different, you know, roles in a studio. And I believe the highest decision maker there definitely got greedy as fuck. And some people are saying like, no, Ben Namco just gave Ape Studios all the projects. It's not their fault. No, no, no. Don't be fucking naive. Leave the animators alone, but fuck the prediction committee for doing this. Giving us the most faithful adaptation fans could ask for by truly making you feel like you're reading Read a the manga. manga. Just move. If you got no one, just move. It's all I want to see. There's a remake of Ranma, continuing the trend of resurrecting old classics to the modern day, and this is actually perfect for me, because I actually have never watched Ranma before, outside of just a few episodes I watched as a kid and I barely have any memory of, aside from, was there boobs? We have our usual suspects in the fantasy. Ranma, it's, it's, it's interesting how you guys are so glazing, and when I say you guys, it's the vocal minority. It's, it's like 12 of you saying, you have to watch this, man, come on, we're gonna do like a gauntlet system of picking up you know, fall 2024 enemies that we haven't, you know, reacted to in this channel. And I put that gauntlet in and guess what fucking won? Spirit Chronicles. That's right. Y'all want to watch Spirit Chronicles more than Rama one half. You don't actually care about this show. Most of you don't. Most of you are probably born like this show is way older than you. This you don't care about this shit, but there's like seven of you that are always saying, please watch this. Please watch. This. It's just disappointment that it just didn't get the feedback that I hoped it would get. Few episodes I watched as a kid and I barely have any memory of aside from was there boobs? We have our usual suspects in the fantasy category. Of course, we get another villainous anime. There's Sid from Eminence and Sh This anime is actually it's 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 bad and good. It's good and bad. Like like it, it's spicy. The drama is fun. It's actually really enjoyable to watch. Villainous shows, I'm realizing, they're always hype. Due to the whole nature of what a villainous role is and how they're like clashing against the heroine. But like this Duke, we're making, this Duke, I don't want to spoil the show, but it's, 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 it's he's basically pre-ordering this girl. He's courting her when she's like eight years old. But there's some really fun and hype moments. I recommend this show. Of course, we get another villainous anime. There's Sid from Eminence and Shadow. If he wasn't actually OP, except everyone still believed that he is. I think mm. this is what Crunch... I ain't gonna lie, guys. Cry for and let this green soul retire? He makes me mad. Like, when I watch Sid or Shadow from Innocent Shadow, he doesn't make me mad. Something about this character pisses me off. I still find the show hilarious. Every time people misunderstand his deeds and stuff, I'm like, oh, that's actually pretty funny. They walk to a random ice cream shop in the fucking, you know, ghettos because he just wanted to eat ice cream. And the people are like, oh my god, how did they know we were building an HQ out here? For sure. But I think it's, it's just because, like, it's the whole aloof person. No, no, no. This is different from Perry, though. 
Because Perry was when the character was actually retarded, and due to the misunderstandings, uh, the humor happens. That is also another formula to really just make you more frustrated and then have have fun. This is like um. Oh, I don't care. I leave me alone. Oh no! And then everyone glazes, and I, I guess it's the whole aspect of like how little he gives a fuck, and just getting away with everything. But that's the whole point of the show. And if you watch it in like a serious way, you're gonna get pissed off. So it's better to just turn your brain off and enjoy the show. Is I think this is what Crunchyroll sees in the mind's eye when someone mentions High Guardian Spice. Guys, I know we like to look down on that trope of having your protagonist buy slaves even though he's helping them out by letting the slaves join his party. I can understand how that can be a bit morally grey, so yeah. how about this protagonist? A guy who completely flips things on his head. See, he doesn't help slaves by buying them, he's helping out his party- He sells the slaves! He members by selling them into slavery. <laughs> Wait, is that I love this show. I think this show is I'm not sure if it's underrated, but uh if you're not watching it, I recommend it. It's a very interesting show where you're not really like the animation is pretty good in terms of the fights, but like it's all about like the dialogues and like how this main character approaches problem solving. And because he's willing to do like atrocious acts of I don't know, I'm not gonna say evil, but it's definitely morally gray. It, it, it's it's one of those characters where like he's not like a white knight cuck. He's not this like idealistic, you know, white knight. Nah, he goes like behind the scene and does some shady shit, and it's 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 kind of refreshing. You should check it out. See, he doesn't help slaves by buying them. He's helping out his party members by selling them into slavery. Wait, is that how it's supposed to work? Hold on, mm -hmm. one. Two, three, four. Where's all the new non sequel isekai like usual? Is the era of isekai actually coming to an end? Is there no new isekai this season that we're watching? Huh. There's a lot more of these at the Adventure Dungeon shows, right? Like, Healer got banished from another party, right? That's not really isekai, but it has that whole isekai feel to it because that's kind of the environment setting that you would be self inserted into. It's a lot of sequels, huh? Villainous is an isekai. Loner Life Isekai. Right, right, right. Loner Life Isekai. Dragon Life is not an Isekai. Dragon Life is a reincarnation where an Isekai is supposed to be, you know, otherworlder. So it's only Loner Life right now, I guess, and a bunch of sequels. Friends? What's this one about? And Villainous, right? Damn. Even Isekai is sick of Isekai. All right, yep. enough of this stuff. What's the if you haven't seen Loner Life, um, give it two episodes. I, I think it, the first episode, you're, gonna, you're not going to find anything really... The whole setup of how they get isekai is pretty fun because, again, he's like saying, man, this is annoying. I don't want to get isekai, so I don't want to ruin the spoilers. But, like, it's a pretty interesting way of doing the storytelling. It's chill. It's fun. Most recent episode, honestly, felt like I see finale. Great pop-off moments. The fights are not the best animated. But it's definitely animated, unlike, you know, fucking Blue Lock and Tower of God. So I recommend this show. This is probably gonna, at, at this rate, this is probably gonna be like a 7 out of 10. Damn. Even Isekai is sick of Isekai. All right, enough of this stuff. What's the actual new Peak. hottest show this season? Peak. Dandaran. Dandaran. Smells like milk. Kind of looks like a uh, milkshake. Mm. Mm. Dun, da, dun. Based on a manga from yet another one of Tatsuki Fujimoto's former assistants. Now, what the hell was this team that he had assembled? A team that I don't know. Something about Fujimoto, right? Chainsaw Man author. Whatever was happening in that house, we need more of it. We need more people to just make crazy stories. And Dan da, dun, it is so, so fun. My favorite enemies right now this season is ReZero, Dan, da, dun, and Dan Machi. Those threes are just so fucking elite. Every episode has been just so, so fun. A team that has now given us the likes of Chainsaw Man, Hell's Paradise, Dan da Dan, and Spy Family. What? <laughs> I didn't know that. That's interesting. Okay.
Bro clearly was just on this team vibing in the corner. Something special must have been happening at that studio to pump out hit after hit after hit. And Dan Dan looks like it's standing up. It's just an elite, elite team, man. Whatever's happening at the Fujimoto residence, bro, that place, it breeds talent. With the best of them. Shonen Jump titles can sometimes feel like they're playing things by the book, following the tried and tested formula. So does Dandadan fit that mold? <laughs> no. I don't even know how to describe the premise of the opening episode, but it Yeah, Dandadan, it just feels so different. Now, it's not like we've never seen supernatural shows. It's not like we've never seen like like um like aliens, like Mob Psycho kind of deals with the supernatural Esper shit, right? And then there's some other shows that may deal with aliens and stuff, but this is like a combination of both. But not only that, it, it's more about like how the storytelling is told from the perspective of Momo, Ayase, and, you know, Ken, you know, Okarun. Their whole dynamic, the chemistry is so good. Everything is just so fun. Things are just always happening. It's really hard to describe the vibe that I get from this show, but it just feels like cinema. And I know that it's cringe and like a cop-out answer to this, like, pure cinema. But I do believe Dandaran is actually just pure cinema. It plays out like a fever dream based on an Alex Jones monologue. Aliens, ghosts, psychic powers, spirit mediums. And then there's this old lady who sees a boy and goes... And like that line, let me gobble that weenie. You may think it's a ridiculous line just to like, you know, use sex cells. I'm Honestly, who the fuck is going to use sex cells for this example? Because you don't want this granny. But like... You know, there's actually a good deep reason if you know about the Turbo Baba lore at the end of this arc. Yup, and your balls. Shaft and balls. This anime is anything but by the book, which is why Science Saru is not only the perfect studio to adapt it, but you get the sense that they've gotten their dream project. This is the anime studio equivalent of find someone who matches your freak. The animation is oozing with expression and character mm -hmm. through every single goddamn frame of this show, even by their normal standards, and they just keep going every new episode. This is the show to be watching this season, and yes. if the weirdness doesn't turn you off, you are in for one amazing ride. I agree. If there's any one single like show from fall 2024 I recommend, it's Dandaran. It has to be Dandaran. There's no other new show that just hits like this. To come. We got another anime original. Let's see what this one's all about. Did he just fail at hanging himself? What was that? I don't get it. I think it was. This one's all about. Holy shit, did he just try to... Yeah, I think Damn. so. He does not look like he's in a good place. And the doctors just gave him two years to live. Wow. Oh, this is the anime about the guy who only has, you know, limited time to live and then goes around, you know, finding new people. And it gives him a sense of fulfillment and a purpose as he finds like people he can, you know, be himself. And then I don't want to watch it like that. I'm sure it's going to be an amazing anime. I'm sure it's going to be a deep, you know, storytelling, but I'm not watching anime to be depressed. You guys can fucking cry yourselves. Oh. What a way to start the episode. So, this is the story about a man with a terminal illness, huh? So we're doing this now. When we're I fishing. imagine what would be in a cozy fishing anime, I don't normally associate it with a guy failing neck pull-ups, getting cancer, drowning in crippling debt, and getting scammed by the crypto market. Bro can apparently catch anything except a break. But this one's been interesting. For a series with such heavy topics, the vibes have been on point. It kind of reminds me of Welcome to the NHK with a fishing twist, and I'm intrigued to see where this series goes. The series is gonna go with him dying at the end after baiting you with the vibes, right? Like... Uh, again, like, I bet the story is good. It's just knowing that this kid has terminal illness and every episode in the back of your mind and just being reminded of that to have this moment of, you know, just tears and sadness and, you know, these different feelings at the end. I don't want to do that shit, but if you want to do it, I bet it's going to be a good story. <laughs> or like plot twist, the doctor actually like misdiagnosed him. And the whole point of the story is that when he you know, had everything. Um, he was just like wasting his life. But the moment that he realized it's like a time, like a, you know, a limited amount of time, he went out to, you know, achieve and accomplish things that he always wanted to. But actually it was a misdiagnosis. And now he's actually learned the value of life. Thank you. I don't think we're going to go that way, but who knows? 
Did he just call terminal illnesses a skill issue? Yep. Are you going? Come get your man. Hey, this is my man. Come get your man. Stop saying it's my man. Bro, come get your man. Why does everyone keep telling me that this is my man? Somehow is this? this managed to be regression, incest, and NTR all in one. Do over damsel. So oh. Oh, this is the other one you guys were kind of telling me to watch, but again, this didn't even get made it into the polls, right? But uh, now that I see the premise of this, I bet this would be a really fun reaction content. One, going back in time to avoid marrying a guy who secretly wants to bang his sister. Well, that's the beauty of the regression genre. You can go back to being a 15-year-old to redo your life choices. Let's see who the next man in line is. Uh-oh. <laughs> just a bunch of dudes pre-ordering, huh? So we can, like, basically the villainous show, right? We're making so many fucking pre-order jokes. But, like, this anime sounds like that on steroids. Uh... Sometimes people can really stretch the definition of a hidden gem, but I've seen almost no talk about this show that has... Nah, no, I've been covering this shit, and here's the really interesting part. My audience can't appreciate this, but there's a huge audience in Japan that likes this. If you look at my performance review playlist and go over every orb video, I'll explain to you exactly what's going on. Every orb video, up until episode 3 and 4, it pops off. Not because my audience cares, because you guys are monkeys that just want isekai garbage. But there's a greater audience in Japan that are basically the opposite of weebs. Rather than Western people glazing Eastern culture, it's Eastern people glazing Western culture. And they love the whole fascination of, you know, church, heretics, you know, conspiracies, cults, and, you know, basically this conversation of geocentrism reigning supreme with the church trying to, you know, maintain their status quo and letting heliocentrism be the worst thing you could ever discover. And it's a great, great anime. Done by MAPPA, it's amazing. But the first three episodes, there's a huge plot twist. By episode three, there is an insane plot twist that just, like, fundamentally changes how the story even like is represented. And I think a lot of people at that point dropped the show. They got filtered out by the change. And it is so apparent just basing it on the viewership differences from episode three. Sorry, not Mad at Mappa, Madhouse. Same shit, they're the same fucking people. Motherfuckers went from other places. It was Mappa, then Madhouse. No, it was Madhouse and then to Mappa, but now Mappa to Madhouse in terms of like good, Work environment turns shitty corporate, new people leave, make new studio, things are good, then it turns to shit, and then Madhouse is now apparently good again. I don't really know what's happening, but I think a lot of people were turned off by the plot twist in episode 3. It's sad. It's sad because the anime is so good, but, you know, most people would rather watch these garbage, you know, <laughs> fantasy shows than Orb. I should probably just watch Orb by myself. One thing I hate about this show is that you can't see anything when it's nighttime without the sky being present. Bro, there's these episodes, I think episode 4 or 5, where you can't see anything about half the episode because it happens at nighttime. Piqued my interest like few other anime have. Orb on the movements of the earth. It's 15th century Poland, a time when you can get arrested, tortured, burned at the stake simply for researching any heretical beliefs that go against the common sense teaching everyone already knows. God created Earth and thus put it at the center of the universe. Enter Rafael, a genius, logical kid who just wants an easy life with a curious hobby in astronomy. He's going to study theology for an easy life path to further appreciate the teachings of God until, by chance, he meets a convicted heretic Hubert. who blackmails him and gives him something so awful, so dangerous, it could get him killed. An idea. What if the Earth wasn't the center of the universe? <gasps> the stars didn't revolve around the world, but instead the Earth revolved around the sun. A stupid, nonsensical idea that Rafael immediately dismisses as he goes home confident that he can disprove that idea in a single night. But as he starts thinking, as he starts entertaining the thoughts, mapping out the models, doing everything he can to dismiss the theory only to find himself falling deeper into it, he realizes something terrifying. You know that this show is important or really good if Giguk actually does a full synopsis rather than just does like a three second joke about a show. <laughs> Every other shitty fucking isekai adventure, we're just joking around, joking around. This is like just the actual synopsis that he's narrating in the actual full voice with like important like soundtrack happening in the background. Shit. What if this idea is actually right? 
It's rare nowadays that I see a concept I have never seen before, but this one fit the bill perfectly. A series about dropping the biggest twist on Earth lore in human history while having to keep it secret from the church to avoid death? Sign me the hell up. This is Nicholas Copernicus Vinland Saga Star with some genuinely fantastic storytelling and characters. Outside of <laughs> Basically, this is what I like to do. Any anime that doesn't happen in like a Japanese setting, and even like, like not even like talking about Isekai, it's like, cause like Vinland Saga or like Helsing or they're like Cowboy Bebop. There's, there's, these are basically animes for people who don't want to identify as like weebs that watch like magical idols and like, you know, Isekai bullshit, but wants a bust bunch of like Western setting shit. So yes, this is our Vinland Saga, but with, I don't know, fucking uh, world revolving around the, uh, sorry, the uh, geocentrism and heliocentrism and churches and heretics. With some genuinely fantastic storytelling and characters. Outside of Dandadan, Dan, this has been the new show I've been excited about the most. Take my advice, go in it's blind good. and give them- Yes, you should watch this. It's a great anime. But it's just so sad that people can't appreciate greatness like this and would rather eat up just adventure dungeon garbage about how I got banished from this party, Navaharim. Come on, man. Why can't you appreciate animes like this? This is the three episode rule and you won't be disappointed. We got yet another I can fix him quirky romance story about a girl getting into a arranged marriage with a downright psychopath of a man that could only ever lead to the most toxic relationship of all time. You don't need to be a genius to see that this is just Bald. a bad idea. If you asked him what item best describes him, it'd probably be this. I mean, just look at him. I gotta ask, girls, is this the kind of man you really want? You'd be surprised how many girls don't want a healthy, normal relationship, but wants to be abused and wants to chase after something that's dangerous because that's the kind of environment that they grew up in. Seriously. I'm not saying like good guys finish last. No, that's very cringe. But like, there's also a lot of people who genuinely enjoy like the thrill of chasing someone dangerous. Do you really think he can be fixed? I just think that- Give me that. Uh, Sydney, I'm recording. Hey, get Sydney! This video to give you a public service announcement. Mm. Ladies, are you tired of the same old boring anime nice guy love interest? Here it is. Enough of these nice vanilla cucks, bro. I'm tired. Give me some spice. Give me some crazy bashitness. Don't you want a fictional man with a little bit of spice to him? A man mm. who's so infatuated with you, yeah. so obsessed with you, that he will protect you, keep you safe, even kill for you! In a fictional setting. Sure, he might be a little mentally unstable. Sure. Just a little mentally unstable, but hey. You know, there's the graph, right? The, the x-axis, the y-axis, the craziness and the hotness, right? The more hot and crazy person are, the more people they really like them. They, there's people that genuinely chase after this. Sure, he might break a few laws, but he will worship you like the goddess you are! Like the goddess you deserve to be! Take your boring vanilla protagonist, keep your majestic Prince Charmings. Why do we keep ignoring the undeniable fact that a little bit of crazy is just that little bit hot? Again, a little bit of crazy is just a little bit hot. I mean, hey, guys love crazy girls too, man. Let the girls love crazy guys too. Y'all can enjoy whatever you want. In a fictional setting. So I say to you, we don't want to fix him. We don't want him to be. That's right. You don't want to fix him. You want to be abused. Just say that y'all have a bunch of fucking issues inside and want to get abused because you crave to be abused. Actually, this example, I think the guy's gonna be very nice to you. He's just abusing everyone else. Fixed! I hereby declare, I proudly let him ruin my life! There it is, I ladies and gentlemen. That, guys, I assure you, we only promote healthy relationships in this household. Okay, let's just move on. Healthy relationship is boring, though. I want my mentally ill, just crazy mental or patient fucking my life up. What do we got next? More Don Machi. All right, let's see what we got here. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, are you tired of the same? <laughs> 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 
Like, where's he going with this? Perfect back to back. Following the Yakuza fiance. That's right. One for the girls. This is for the guys. Same old boring anime nice girl love intro. Mecha Ude. The story. No, oh, you needed to do more. No, actually, that was pretty good. I I really liked how immediately after you know Sydney went through the whole Yakuza fiance rant. Right. <laughs> we get boom. But we got the exact same one for you know the dudes. I think that Damachi is heavily heavily underrated and heavily underappreciated due to the nature of it being five seasons in this shit's been airing for like 10 years man people forget about this show and we're five seasons deep every new season more people get filtered out that's just how numbers work but this season of damachi might be my favorite so far it's so so good jc staff is absolutely killing it and like I implore you to check out Damachi from season one if you haven't seen Damachi at all. It's just so, so fun. Gentlemen, are you tired of the same old boring anime nice girl love intro? Mecha Ude. The story behind this production is almost as interesting as the story of the show itself. The brainchild of Sai Okamoto, a young ambitious animator who had a dream of directing her own anime. She put together a team and a Kickstarter, raising okay. $65,000 to fund a pilot which after years of delays and struggles, her and her newly formed studio Trife managed to complete it. But the dream... Oh, this is pretty cool. It's like a grassroots project all just funded through fans. Didn't end there. That was clearly just a stepping stone to a much grander vision, which they announced last year to confirm that a full anime series was in production. And now, eight years after the original Kickstarter, this is what they have to show for it. It looks good. This feels Battle Shonen-esque. I don't think my audience would be into it, but it looks good. One quick look. Like, that whole fight scene there is better than anything Tower of God show me. Like, this, is, this looks good. The soundtrack too, it's Hiroki Sound, alright? Sounds just like him, you can hear the sound of horns. And you can immediately tell what the influences are. Glorious, over-the-top action, wearable limbs that are also sentient. Hiroyuki Samano doing the soundtrack. There it if is. If I didn't know any better, I would have thought this was an offshoot team from Studio Trigger. But that doesn't stop it from standing out from 90% of the other anime you usually see. Now, it may stand out in terms of the whole, like, production value. But what about the story? Does the story stand out? You usually see. It's a loud, in-your-face, bombastic action show that wears its influence on its sleeve, fueled by the passion of the people behind it. This okay. project is clearly a dream come true for the creators involved, and while the plotline might not be something we haven't seen before, I am sincerely hoping they are able to pull off something special, so I'm going to be keeping a close eye on So, generic story with amazing animation. Uh, it could still be enjoyable. I mean, that's basically Demon Slayer, right? Uh, maybe it can capture a lot of people's hearts through the amazing combat and the animation, but uh, the overall design of this mecha stuff, I don't think people are big fans of it. Me personally, I'm never really like a big enjoyer of mecha. Doesn't mean that like I won't watch mecha shows, but if you like, and this isn't even like mecha suits, it's just like partial mecha transformations, right? But like, will this really? Does I capture the heart of the young audience that you would usually watch Battle Shonen esque shows like this? I'm not sure. It'd be kind of sad if a grassroots funded pod project, a passion of love, you know, gets done dirty, but you gotta make shows what the audience wants. You can't just make shows thinking like this is what the audiences want to want. You gotta understand what people want and deliver that product. Well, to pull off something special, so I'm gonna be keeping a close eye on this. <laughs> oh, hey, a harem anime where a guy moves into a shrine and has to pick one of three lovely shrine maidens. Ah, we have a shrine maiden rom com. I don't think I've ever seen a shrine maiden rom com just yet, but I know a lot of them exist. Maiden sisters to marry. I think I've seen this exact plot line like five times before. One of them was Temperu, and the other four were definitely Hentai. This feels like an anime that jumped straight out of the mid 2000s. The first 10 minutes was a goddamn speedrun of every cliche harem anime trope you could think of. The Guy trips, lands on girl's titties. Girl trips, lands on guy's face with ass. Panties just showing. Guy opens door. Girl's getting changed, showering. Kia, hentai slap. Classic. This could be a nice comfort show, but it's going to need to do something a bit different to really hook me. Uh, what? editor, can you rewind back just a bit? Sound effects? And again. 
That's the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen. The sound effect there? I feel like Amelia's sound effects in ReZero is way cuter than this when she's fighting. Or even like turning the phone away when she's calling the, bro the media. Another show revolving around getting married? Is anime trying to tell me something? Uh, I think anime... Well, there's a whole like birth rate declining in Japan and stuff like that, right? Maybe this is a government funded project to try and prop up the uh... <laughs> people to encourage people to... Start fucking, get married, have kids, please. Uh. <laughs> I love how Sandy just keeps showing up out of nowhere. <laughs> It'd be funny if they poured water over Giggs' head, then he's like sweating, like that one key and peel meme. Or he just like sweat buckets are fucking controlling down and you're like, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> They're happily married, guys. This is a joke, okay? Happy marriage. Here right? we have two right? co-workers who right? decide to stage an entire fake marriage, lying to their co-workers, lying to their parents, going through an entire season-long Kaguya-style plan, just all because what? they're afraid of being what? transferred to Anchorage, Alaska. That's the thing. In um, Japan, basically, like, when you work for a corporation, you might be stationed in, let's say, Tokyo. But, like, your boss can be like, all right, we're going to need you to move to somewhere but fuck nowhere and work there for, like, half a year. And, like, you just, you can't say no. You just have to say, okay, boss. But, like, they made that a meta. And a way to, like, prevent that is to get married for this situation. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, we don't want to go there. We just want to fucking get married and fake it so we would stay here. Shout out to the 10 anime fans in Anchorage catching strays. Honestly, I'm just happy to see more romance anime with adult characters. This is the type of setting we need more of. Not yet another high school, high school. romance with socially awkward teenagers. This time we got two socially awkward adults so adverse to social interactions, they'd rather fake a relationship. This is basically the equivalent of, you know, battle shonen shows no longer having the main character be like a 14 year old kid but be like kaiju 8 right to have like older representation since these motherfuckers are all grown up we need to have you know the legacy demogra uh, dem uh audience be able to relate to something now because they're getting older and now instead of that this is basically the rom-com equivalent you're no longer like a 14 15 year old kid you're probably getting older and getting jobs so hey you can self-insert yourself now ship then just tell their boss they don't want to move to alaska so, you know, way more mature. All right, an all new original Dragon Ball that was the very last thing Akira Toriyama was working on before he- Hold on a second. Sorry so loud. I had to shut my window. I could hear the entire continent of South America from here. Seeing to Why do Spanish speaking people love Goku so much? There's actually a video essay that I want to watch that explains that, but it is actually insane. Like how many people love Goku there? And it's like a cultural thing. I love it. They have the best memes too. Dragon Ball Daima is a great looking show. It looks great. It sounds great. But due to it not being like a story like Dragon Ball Super or Dragon Ball Z, where you have this OP character to pursue and then to have crazy new forms to, you know, get the audience hyped up. I feel like Daima is really suffering. It's getting carried by the, obviously, the nostalgia of Akira Toriyama along with this passing but like it just feels like it's falling flat because it's more Dragon Ball-esque than Dragon Ball Z if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, a splicing highlights of the boo arc with modern animation. I get the feeling it's only a matter of time before they decide to do a modern remake but this time the entire cast have been turned into kids in what looks like a new adventure with OG Dragon Ball vibes. Yep. Not gonna yep. lie though Goku being a kid isn't gonna stop his fans from saying well you know he's still strong he can still be All Might he can still be Gojo. Well Dragon Probably. Ball fans maybe but can he beat this? What? <laughs> Blue box. Inumata-kun, <laughs> Ah! Woman basketball. <laughs> Last season we had a jam packed all you can eat. <laughs> you, also, woman, you won't believe how many people were so fucking angered and triggered 
because I said, ain't no way her jump shot like this right now. Holy shit, people can't take a joke. But this show, it's unfortunate that we had to drop it. It was underperforming, but it was most mostly due to copyright, right? This studio, I think, uh, I forget the exact name, but copyright holders on YouTube, they're going around just manually blocking everyone's, you know, videos, so it is what it is. <laughs> Woman Basketball. Say the line. Ah! Woman Basketball! Last season we had a jam-packed, all-you-can-eat buffet of great romance anime to pick from, and this season- I still think Makane Heroine is the best rom-com of summer 2024. And maybe even all of 2024. I might be crazy. But like, do you think Blue Box is gonna be mocking? I don't know. The shit that A1 Pictures did there, it was- it blew my mind. Season's heavy hitter seems to be there. Oh yeah, Dangers in My Heart happened this year. That's crazy. We recently also finished Dangers in My Heart a couple months ago, but it did air back in January, right? I feel like 100 Girlfriends, um... It... I enjoy 100 Girlfriends more, but... Something tells me that Makayin is just pure cinema. You know what I mean? Maybe it's due to the whole shameless etchy part of 100 Girlfriends. It's, and I, I enjoy watching 100 Girlfriends more than Makayin. But in terms of like an objective rating of like what's considered the best anime. And what does that even mean? Shouldn't one's entertainment be like the most important thing? Like I enjoyed us more, therefore it should be better. I enjoyed 100 Girlfriends more than Mocking, but like something about Mocking just like screams art. This, Blue Box. I know I said earlier I was looking for a romance outside of a school setting, but I might just have to make an exception for this one because this- Yeah, because this is school setting romance with basketball, with sports. This was a full on insulin shot straight into my veins. Not only does it clearly have high production values, especially among the other blue anime, but it also really looks like they are not Woman shying away basketball. from the sports aspect of the show either. You've got your tournament basketball. arcs, promise to go to nationals, an adorable romance brewing Woman between basketball. two characters dedicated to their sports. This looks like a real- he keeps fucking spamming woman basketball. I can't take it seriously. Your 50 50 split between woman a sports basketball. anime and a romance drama. Manga. I can't even tell if he's taking this shit seriously or if he's shitting on the show by saying woman basketball. <laughs> Readers have talked this one up, so I'm expecting a lot of good things, and I'm interested to see how they end up tying the romance to them hitting their goals. <laughs> Woman <laughs> Wait, that's Baki. That's a Baki body. Let me be his dad. That Hama guy, right? There's a show called Kimiwa Medo-sama, or the official English name, You, you Are Miss Maid. Servant. A great name because as someone who knows a little bit of Japanese, I can confirm it's pretty hard to find an accurate translation of the word Medo. Medo. Just maid. Can't think of any word at all. This is basically maid. Violet Evergarden meets that crazy maid from Black Lagoon. It's cute, but also she's a kudere, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to connect. That's right. Giga hates kudere's <laughs> based. Um, it just feels to me that this show just glorifies trauma and dependence and PTSD. Am I crazy? Cause like, think about this show. The entire reason that she's even here, like, like, the f like, she wants to feel like she's needed. She comes from, like, a really sad background of being treated so cold, right? The different interpretations of her name, Snow, Sway or something before compared to whatever it is now and about how Snow equals warm. And, like, we need to be nice to her. The main character just has a maid with so much emotional baggage that shows up at the front door. And if you're not affectionate, if you're not, you know, treating her well, she gets very sad. And something about that feels a bit perverted. In the sense that like we're glorifying the trauma and like the sadness and the depression that she has. And like taking advantage of that. That's definitely one way to interpret, interpret the story. The other way could be more representation of people that may have gone through a similar situation. You know, feeling like, oh, this is a rom-com for me. Sure. That could definitely exist too, but maybe a lot of people kind of felt turned off by it. Not only because there seemed to be nothing really happening, right? This story, I think a good example of this is like, again, I said it before in the beginning, 
it feels like it's all it's like a hot air balloon it's like it looks good the production value is good everything looks stunning yet the story feels like nothing is happening at least for the three or four episodes that we've seen and i thought a show like this you got to fucking enjoy like I thought you guys would eat this shit up because there's been time after time that we've had rom-coms like this happen and you just ate it up. But something about this show just didn't click with you. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that it, it is a bit boring. Nothing really happens. And on top of that, this whole glorifying the trauma and the baggage and having you kind of be like, yep, I can fix her kind of deal. Like, does that turn you off? I don't know. With her that much. On well, second thought, she might fit right into trash taste. For anyone looking for a magical girl anime, we got Acro Trip, aka PG 13, gushing over magical girls. But the one I got my eye on is Magi Lumiere, for a satirical, grounded take of magical girls where they fight the biggest evil of all corporate management. This may be a magical. <laughs> wait, wait, what the fuck was that? Take of magical girls where they fight the biggest evil of all corporate Corporate management. This looks like a di what's happening here. This looks actually pretty fun. Management. This may be a magical girl anime with fantasy elements, but I don't think we're gonna get a more true to life representation of. Yeah, this kind of stuff I really like, where there's like more modern like aspects, stuff that you can relate to. A whole corporate structure hindering the magical girls from doing their job seems like a pretty funny concept. The job hiring process in the modern day. <sighs> oh yeah, that's right. Mao 2099. This is a very good show too. I'm enjoying. Maybe a magical girl anime with fantasy elements, but I don't think we're gonna get a more true to life representation of the job hiring process in the modern day. Mm -mm. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Based. I stand corrected. This one was surprisingly enjoyable. You've got an all-powerful demon lord with unmatched potential, a mastery of deadly magic, is able to bend the entire world to his will. He gets resurrected 500 years later into a cyberpunk world where his legacy is forgotten, his followers have moved on, and technology has rendered his all-powerful magic completely useless. That's Motherfucker right. Motherfucker just got the true Zoltrak experience. It's a mishmash of such a wide variety of tropes, genres, and settings, and somehow it works. You're seeing Anos Voldigo getting humbled and being forced to survive in the world of Cyberpunk 2077, where the show asks, what can even a demon lord do when he has no job prospects, no qualifications, no experience to speak of, and no practical skills that would be useful at all? It's easy. Just stream, bro. Just make content. All you gotta do is play video games online after clicking the go stream button, man. And you'll be a millionaire. Why don't you just do it? No experience to speak of and no practical skills that would be useful at all. Let's go. He becomes a Twitch streamer. Yeah. This is getting a bit too real. The corporate experience doesn't end there. I love Demon Lord 2099. Um, it's not the... What's this, sir? It's definitely not the most excited, you know, anime. And even in my anime reaction channel, this is not the best performing. But there is an audience that really does enjoy it. And I love the whole futuristic aspect of like the cyberpunk-esque, you know, environment. But with like someone from like the ancient times showing up, trying to adapt to this modern society that turns to streaming. There was even like VTuber Hololive references. And now he's just like doing that shit. It's, it's a really fun watch. JC staff, I think, is behind this. All the JC staff anime that I've been watching recently has been really, really good. My like um perspective on JC staff art is pretty good right now, man. Prospects, no qualifications, no experience to speak of, and no practical skills that experience Just doesn't end there. He becomes a Twitch streamer. This is getting a bit too real. The corporate experience doesn't end there, though, as we have an anime about an unlikely duo rising up to become the world's first trillionaires. Whoa. Their secret? Spend all their early investments on stupidly expensive office chairs like this. Like, okay, I'm not looking for the most realistic story in the world, but how's that gonna help? I mean, it's an investment. It's just straight up, uh, I mean... I think that you can list it as an asset, but you can also, it's like a business expense, right? And you're going to be sitting on it every fucking day. Like, of course you want to invest in a good chair. These guys are going to be trillionaires, I tell you. They know yep. exactly what they're doing. This is 100% based on reality. Like how a lot of the internet's reacted to this. When you hear a title like, my wife became an elementary school student. You're I think that is the stupidest marketing you can do. I think that does more harm than good. People have this notion that any, you know, 
advertisement or you know any publicity is good publicity. It is not. You know why? Yeah, that's a Herman Miller Aaron that uh, Gigacast. Um, do you know why that like uh, Bunny Girl Senpai? A lot of people skipped it, even though it's, it was never really about a girl in a Bunny Girl suit. It's because people saw it and thought, "Hmm, dumb fan service. Not gonna check it out." Turns out that the show was anything but dumb fan service, right? Like you shouldn't, if you're trying to appeal to a wider audience, Cohen Win with such a fucking edgy title like if my wife got reincarnated as a middle school like an elementary school girl like what do you think people are gonna do people are gonna be like yeah i'm not even gonna button fucking check it out some people might just because on because of the basis of the title but most people are gonna be like this sounds degenerate i'm fucking out i'm done you're probably gonna be like damn they're letting Drake fund anime now? But anyone who actually watches this will realize this is a ridiculous title that misrepresents the type of show that this is. Ten years on, after a man lost his wife to illness, he and his daughter have never gotten over it. A shadow of the people they used to be, nothing has truly filled that hole that their wife and mother had left when she passed away. Until one day, when she shows up at the door as a reincarnated ten-year-old kid. Yeah, and I hear the story is actually really good. It's just, this isn't about like Lollicon fan service. This isn't any, it's nothing about that. But again, the title's gonna turn people off or they won't even give the show a chance. And like, what the fuck is the point of that marketing, bro? It, I think it just falls flat on your face. And like, if you think that this is not meant for, like, like I think it's a very small minded mindset to say that, oh, they don't care about a wider audience. They only care about appealing in Japan. Like, sure, that's like a business strategy. But like, don't you think you're selling yourself short? If your goal was to never appeal to a wider audience and you only want to appeal to your degenerate, you know, audience within Japan, sure, you hit your goal mark. But in terms of like success in a bigger scale, that's what I'm saying. Advertisement, depending on the goals, this kind of tactic is bad for a wide appealing audience. But if it has a different set of goals, then do whatever you want. Except... No. The family gets a second chance to spend precious time together. The father rediscovers his purpose. The daughter gets her motherly role model back. You know what the funniest shit actually is about this show? And like what you guys are saying right now? And you guys are defending this marketing saying it's for the Japanese people. It doesn't matter about the global audience. The Japanese title dish is called Sumasho. And Sumasho probably is like a shorthand form of the whole, you know, Japanese way of saying if my daughter is my wife was reborn as a middle school kid right but like Sumo show i don't know how it reads in japanese but i doubt that it doesn't it, I, I i doubt that like it sounds as bad as like the english fucking name because the english title is the problem right if you didn't care about the english audience like, I don't know, something about Sumashu in Japanese versus the actual English translation for the audience that you're not trying to hit, something about that is counterintuitive. Back ...that she was missing, but as the episodes play out, you feel this melancholic atmosphere. We're all armed with the knowledge that these happy times can't last forever. Eventually, they're going to have to face the reality of the situation, and you're sitting there, prepping your heart for when that ball's finally going... One of those fucking stories again, just like the one where you're terminally ill and you're going fishing and you finally start having fun again. Like, if you enjoy tearjerker stories, go for it. Watch this all you want. But I don't watch anime to feel sad. Life is already sad, bro. I watch anime to have some fucking fun. To drop. It's a story about coping with the loss of a loved one and how to move on from that. And while the title is bait as hell, it could have been worse. I mean, what if it was this exact title except, uh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, one day I can see it. Oh my god, just reverse the fucking words. It looks so much worse now. Oh no. Uzumaki. Junji Ito is one of the most influential mangakas in the horror world, producing. If he is one of the most influential mangakas in the horror world, then why is every one of his animes so fucking ass? Why does the studios that adapt his content have no respect for the work that he puts out? What is that? In some of the most unnerving, terrifying stories you can find in the medium. True works of art that deserve an anime that give them justice. 
But time after time after time again, people have attempted to adapt his work and every single time without fail, it has resulted in an anime that was more cursed than the stories it was adapting. That is, until five years ago, a trailer was released on what is arguably his magnum opus, Uzumaki. And the most terrifying thing about this was, unthinkably, it at- You feel refreshed after crying out in an anime? Reason why it has an appeal? Maybe. But like, don't you think those type of people are like the most privileged people where your life is just so full of happiness. You have no worries in your life. Your material conditions are so good. Everything is so good that you need to find a reason to be sad. Do you think like really sad people go out and watch even more sad shit? I don't know. Because like, I know how shitty reality is and handling loss of life and all this different bullshit. The last thing I want to do is watch something that reminds me of that again. But then there's people that actually like seek that stuff out. And if you feel refreshed by crying for that kind of stuff, doesn't that kind of suggest that like, because your life is so void of any sort of actual fucking real life consequences and these shitty situations that you want to like have a fictional like story to make you feel like that? I don't know. To me personally, I would never seek out these kind of depressing shows because life is already so fucking hard. And the last thing again is I want to be reminded of these different things, right? But to some people, they like yearn for it. Yeah, maybe some people just enjoy feeling sad. Everyone's different. Everyone has like different things that they want. Even like people who are sad after like a breakup or something, right? Like when you have like a really sad moment, listening to like sad songs and stuff, right? People do that because they want more of that kind of feeling be validated. I'm not really sure. Actually looked good. This was it, the last chance. If this didn't work, there was no hope in hell a good adaptation could ever be done. Just Then it's truly over for Junji Ito then, huh? Cause Uzumaki I hear was absolute fucking ass. Just one more time, we can hope, then radio silence for five whole years until today when i'm proud to say they finally did it they actually did it boys look at this this is bro only saw one episode wait for it he's about to hit us beautiful it's unnerving it's everything a Junji Ito adaptation should be they did wait it. for it they really did it <laughs> oh no <laughs> after episode one uh oh now what not the The real horror is this highlight reel. Yeah. <laughs> I hate everything. <laughs> Yo, he didn't even talk about Tower of God. God damn. Yo, I wish that he brought up Tower of God season two and about how, you know, mid it is right now too, but yes, and it still has more animation than Blue Lock. Womp womp. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Thank I did. very much this month too. Author Curtis Eckstein. Thank you so much, Giga, for another seasonal anime in a nutshell. Please go give his video a like. Here's the link. And of all the animes, again, that's airing right now, the ones that I've watched that I would personally recommend, and a lot of them are sequels like ReZero and Danmachi. Those are the shows that I really enjoy. But Orb, I think, is so fucking good. If you haven't checked out Orb, I implore you to do it. Just, it's such a different setting, such a different, refreshing environment compared to your always the same Japanese high school, middle school setting or some sort of fantasy land where you're just doing dungeon adventuring and guild shit like that. Orb is really good. Uh, Dan 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 definitely st stand out the most, right? Of the like, brand new anime. Uh, Blue Lock is... I recommend it if you like to watch like a, a train wreck, like a dumpster fire happening and every week everyone's just laughing on how bad could it get, you know? Stuff like that. And other than that, like Damachi, ReZero, you know? Uh, Dan Dan is my favorite anime pairing right now. And like Blue Lock, again, Blue Box isn't bad. I just had to drop it because of copyright issues. I'd probably still be watching it if it wasn't for that. And anything else? Uh, Mao 2099 looks pretty fun. In terms of the uh, animes that we never got to check out, the Do Over Damsel in Distress, I think would be Stop. perfect. There are kids in right? The I don't know exactly where it is, but Do Over Damsel, it just sounds like the perfect kind of show because like for the same reasons that we enjoy the villainous show, it feels like Do Over Damsel sounds like even more crazy and fun to just like make fun of. 
And maybe the Yakuza fiance, but maybe these shows will get voted in, in the next gauntlet poll when we, you know, may pull for some shit to watch in December of the stragglers of the season. But hey, that's it from me. See you next time.